We all know that guy who goes to school, finishes matric, goes studies, gets a lovely degree, goes and gets a lovely job, and then lives happily ever after, blah, 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 blah. We're not talking about that guy today. We're talking about you. And because we're talking about you, I'd like for everybody to just close your eyes for a moment. So now, you're 15, as quite a few in this room are. And you have to make a decision about the subjects that you will decide, which will define what kind of degree you're going to study. You don't know much about what these subjects mean, and your parents are probably choosing them for you. Fast forward, you're going to be 18, and it'll be time for you to decide what degree you're going to study. This decision carries debt in the form of a student loan, most probably, and it was probably chosen by you and 80% your parents. And finally, you're 30, 40, or even 50 years old, and leaving your current job to go do what really makes you happy. Can you open your eyes now? And then there's me. I was kicked out of school when I was 16, and I started homeschooling the same year, and I've since been in four different industries. I've had three businesses, one of which I run now, where I teach unemployed youth to code and entrepreneurship skills, and I'm 19. Um, So in today's society, we have a culture of forcing children to make life and career defining decisions based off of a lack of information. The result in that is that we have a high tertiary education dropout rate, we have a lot of unemployed youth, oversaturation of certain job spaces, and an unmotivated workforce. So in my research about the current tertiary first year education dropout rate, I came across two alarming numbers, 39% and 68%. 68 being among the highest numbers. And with, since we're talking about first year dropout rates, that means up to 68% of you guys will drop out in your first year of tertiary education. That's universities, FETs, colleges, or any other post-matric anything. So, if you happen to be a part of that other percentage who manages to make it through the hula hoops of tertiary education and you get to the other side and you're really excited and really happy and yay, now I'm going to go get a job, good luck with that. I'm sure some of you are trying to figure out what my board over here says. It says, I have a degree in public management. I'm looking for a job, CV available. Now, unfortunately, that's not something I made up. That's the reality of a 28-year-old man in Gauteng right now. He's 28, he finished his degree in public management, and he has a board that looks exactly like that, standing at a robot looking for a job. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I go to university, I'm not going there with the hopes of one day standing at the side of the road with a sign. But, have no fear, guys. The solution to your problems is here. If we introduce internships and apprenticeships into the school curriculum, we'll have students, meaning you guys, making more informed decisions about your career choices. And I'm sure you're wondering, so how do we do this? Well, if we take students from grade eight and say since there's four terms in a school year, we take two terms out of each year term and say that for two weeks, you will go and you'll intern or apprentice at a, either a company that specializes in something or in a specific department of a company that, that is just a large corporate such as either a software development firm or the software development department of a large corporate such as Woolworths. 
in those two weeks, you'll be provided with a mentor, and that mentor will be your go-to person. They'll impart with you an introductory skill set, as well as they'll be the person to answer all of your questions about what it is that they do, and also the dark side of, every, of what they do, because every career path has a dark side. And for me as an entrepreneur right now, that dark side is admin. This will have a large and wonderful effect on students. As, as young people, I know, and I'm sure everybody else in here knows, that we love to brag. So, at the end of two weeks, I go back to school, and, we ha and I'll speak to my friends and tell my friends about what I did for two weeks and vice versa. And thus, we'll have students engaging in meaningful and fruitful conversations that actually matter about their futures. And this way, we'll have students learning something that a book will never be able to teach you. Good example of this is that when I was in grade five, I wanted to be an architect. And then I learned what an architect actually does from a book. And I was like, that's not for me. But the reason I wanted to be an architect was because I wanted to draw beautiful buildings. And had I have found out that I could have become a draftsman, which is the person who draws all the beautiful buildings for an architect, I probably wouldn't be giving you this talk today. And I wasn't able to find that out because I was never exposed to the right people, nor did I have the opportunity to ask those questions. This is a system that can work. And I know it can work because I've done it, and many successful people I know have gone through it before. I left the formal school education system when I was 16, and it was decided that I was going to homeschool. My mom said, I don't trust you. You're way too naughty. I'm not leaving you at home alone. You're going to have to follow me everywhere I go. And as such, I followed my mom everywhere she went. And I came across the people that she comes across in her day-to-days, and eventually I realized, hey, I know what you're doing. I can actually do that. That's pretty cool. I like what you're doing. Fast forward a few years later, and I'm 19 now, and I've been in quite a few industries, and I have my own business. I would like to see that by the end of 2017, to have at least 200 school students go through this process. And I challenge anyone in this room to join me on this mission. I want you to close your eyes one more time. You're 15 again, and it is that time for you to make a decision about the subjects that you will choose, which will define what kind of degrees you're going to study. You may open your eyes this time. Because this time you've gone through eight different internships or apprenticeships, and you've had eight different mentors, and you've engaged in meaningful discussions with your friends. So you make your choice wisely. Fast forward, you're 18, and it's time for you to decide what degree you're going to study. You've had 20 different mentors, and you've been through 20 different industries. You make your decision wisely. Finally, 30, 40, or even 50 years old, able to say that you're happy where you are, and you can look back on your life knowing that you've made the most informed decisions possible to get to where you are. Thank you.